Hello, hello, hello. Today is Friday, September 30, 2022. Solutions to problem 154. The, <laughs> the Ethereum accelerated in a cyclotron. So read with me. We wish the particle to have a kinetic energy of 10 MeV. That is so many joules. At the exit radius, which is one meter. It goes around, the radius one meter, and then it exits, and then it's 10 MeV. So we may solve, solve now for the necessary magnetic field strength. I derived this in lecture 13 of 802. M is the mass of the deuteron, K is the kinetic energy, Q is the charge of the deuteron, and R is the radius of that circle. So you plug in the numbers here and you find 0.65 Tesla. Here is the mass of the Deuteron, I gave that in the problem. Here you see the 10 MeV. And here you see the mass Q of the Deuteron. It has only one proton. And the radius is one meter. So it's all there. If you work out the speed corresponding to this desired kinetic energy, using the familiar equation that k is one half m v squared, you will find that v is approximately equal to one tenth of the speed of light. So, if the particle's energy were much higher, we would need to resort to the relativistic relation between speed and energy given in the lecture. But since it's not much higher, we can just live with it as it is now. So now the answer to question B. The alternating frequency required by the cyclotron frequency is given here, and I derived that in my lecture 13. Q is again the charge, B is the magnetic field, and M is the mass of the deuteron. And the, out is then, the outcome is then 4.9 megahertz. Answer to question C. The neutron has one unit of electric charge. I mentioned that earlier, the 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So with every passage through the 22 kilovolt gap, it gains 22 kilo electron volts of kinetic energy. However, it passes through the gap twice per, per revolution. Given the known 10 MeV final energy of the particle, we can now compute the total number of revolutions. It's 10 to the 7th, which is the 10 MeV. The 2 is because it goes through twice, and the 2.2 times 10 to the 4th is the 22 kilovolts, kilo electron volts. D. Question D. Each revolution takes a time, 1 over f, right? f is the frequency, so t is the time, one resolution. And f then is the, the cyclotron frequency which we found already upstairs. So the total time from start to exit for a deuteron is the number of all revolutions times the time that it takes. And the time that it takes is 1 over f. And we know f already, we calculated that. So out pops that the whole 
acceleration takes place in about 4.6 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds. So that is the result of part D. So let's now look at the last question. Let uh, the increase in kinetic energy during each full rotation be 44 kilo electron volt, which is so many joules. At the time t after the deuteron has entered the cyclotron, the deuteron will have completed t over capital T is t times f evolutions, and f is then the frequency which we already calculated. Since the particle makes many revolutions before exiting the cyclotron, we may approximate its kinetic energy as a smooth function of time rather than a function that increases by abrupt steps corresponding to passages through the gaps. So we then have that 1 half mv squared is delta k, which is the increase for each rotation, and this tf is the number of rotations. So we now have the speed of the deuteron as a function of time. Because we know delta k, we know f, and we know m. To find the total amount of ground covered over the course of the cyclotron trip, let's call that delta s, we integrate the speed with respect to time over the trajectory. So we get delta s is the integral from 0 to delta t times v dt. And we know v. And so that comes out to be this integral. That's a very easy one. You get here delta t to the power of 3 halves. You know f. You know m. You know delta k. You know delta t. Out pops delta s. 950 meters. I agree this was not a high school problem. Uh, maybe not even a JEE main problem. But for sure, this could have been a JEE advanced problem. It's interesting, by the way, to think about this, that Everything happens on an extremely short time scale, but during that time scale it makes so many revolutions that it still has traveled 950 meters. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? All right, for those of you who have never heard of this, watch my lecture 13. It's all there and you will broaden your horizons and that's what physics should be all about.